programs that Mary and I really enjoy watching is Money for Nothing. And uh, we were watching an episode a few weeks ago when the presenter, Sarah Moore, went down to her local dump and she found somebody throwing away some old wooden fence posts. And she asked the person if she could take them. She took them away and she gave them to uh, a woodworking expert, an artisan, who put them on his lathe and started trying to make them into some wooden ornaments. And his aim was to try and make them into little wooden trees that uh, could be maybe a Christmas ornament or something like that, a poplar tree, an oak tree and so forth. And as he put them on his lathe and as he started working with his chisels, he began to realise that there were bits of rot within the wood and he had to stop his lathe, take them off, have a look, dig some out. Others he had to modify the shape and the design a little bit to enable him to create something. But at the end, he produced several nice wooden model trees as ornaments, which Sarah Wood came back and took away. She was very happy with them and she managed to sell them, made a little bit of money, which she gave back to the person who had thrown the rotten uh, fence posts away in the first place. Our Bible story today uh, has reached the point where Abraham is in Gerar and has been telling everybody that his wife is in fact his sister and he did it to protect himself and even though he was willing to, if you like, sacrifice his wife to become part of the king of Gerar's harem. And he has been called to account. The king of Gerar, Abimelech, has called him in and asked him to explain himself. And uh, Abraham embarks on this explanation. Well, you know, uh, uh, Gerar is a terribly godless place and I was very, very frightened that you might try to kill me. And that was a true part of the story. He had been. And that's why he had actually decided that he would pretend that Sarah, his wife, was in fact his sister. Uh, and, and of course, my, my sister is actually, my wife is really actually my, my sister. Well, she's my half-sister. So there was a bit of half-truthing going on, half a lie, but certainly he had set out to deceive everybody. And the third thing he had done, of course, is he had told Sarah that she needs to go along with the story too. And of course, she, she had. And it's a rather, a rather sad thing for a man uh, like Abraham to have been caught, really, in a deceit, in a lie, in a story, largely to protect himself and to do so at the expense of his dearly beloved wife. What do we sort of to make of, a, of that sort of story? What, what do we learn in the 21st century about this story that happened many, many centuries ago? Well, I think that we are all to degree, we are like Abraham. The first reason we're like him is because like Abraham, we are called on a mission. Abraham's mission was to go to find the promised land. You have a mission and I have a mission from God. And your mission and my mission will be different. But we are called to be missionaries, to listen to God and to find out from him what is the pattern, the purpose for our lives. But the second reason that we're like uh, Abraham is because we are also flawed characters like he was. And Abraham despite the fact that he was willing to deceive and lie and betray, was still used mightily by God. And you too, and I too, can be used mightily by God. But we have our character flaws and our deficiencies too. We're a bit like that piece of wood that the woodworker put on the lathe, the old fence posts. We've all got that little bit of rot inside us. Maybe we're willing to not always tell the truth. Maybe we're inclined to protect ourselves if we feel threatened, even if it's at the expense of somebody else or even a loved one. Maybe we do those things, but they don't rule us out from being of use in God's kingdom. And so like those pieces of rotten wood on that lathe, we can be turned into something of beauty and value. Our character flaws do not stop us being of purpose for God. And God tends to use people with flaws to carry out his mission and purpose. And the reason he does that is he doesn't actually have anybody else because he's chosen to involve us in his mission. He inevitably has to deal with flawed personalities. So don't let your flaws, whatever they are, get in the way 
of finding out what God's purpose is for you today. Go out, get on mission.